Hi, this is John C. Murphy for No Part Dark. In this video, we will walk through an online game art tutorial that demonstrates how to make this little birdie using the Inkscape software. Inkscape is a vector editing software available from inkscape.org. And the tutorial we will be following is by Chris Hildenbrandt, and it's available at the Gamasutra website. Let's start with a little orientation to the Inkscape software. It is document based, so when you first open it up, you get this blank little document. Maximizing the window, we see that none of the standard panels are open yet. So come down here to the lower right and click these icons, which open up the fill and stroke panel, as well as the layers panel. Notice that in addition to the fill and stroke settings, we also have the color selector at the bottom, which if you roll over any of the color swatches in, the information window at the bottom will inform you that you set the fill color by clicking on one of these swatches, and you set the stroke color by shift clicking on one of them. Notice that the list of colors is huge, and you need to use this scroll bar to see them all. Speaking of scroll bars, there is no hand tool in this program, so these scroll bars for the drawing area are quite important. If they ever get lost, come up here, under View, Show Hide, make sure scroll bars is checked. Some other things of note in these toolbars on the right side, this snap to page border thing is definitely something I want to have turned on. Also note that when you roll over these icons, you can see their keyboard shortcuts. For instance, this one, Control D for duplicate, that's a useful one to memorize. Also note these zoom commands, four fills the screen with a drawing and five zooms out to show the entire page. By the way, these are part of a larger set of zoom commands that are found up here under View, Zoom. Notice that plus and minus are for zoom in and zoom out. There's also a zoom tool over here on the left toolbar, which zooms in when you either click and drag out a marquee or simply click anywhere. Use right click or shift click to zoom out. Notice that the keyboard shortcut for this is F3. And most of the tools on the left have as their keyboard shortcut either one of the F, that is function keys, or shift plus one of the F keys, making them easier to memorize. Let's demonstrate some of these tools. Hit F5 to select the circle slash ellipse tool, click on a color for the path, and shift click on a different color to set the stroke, then click and drag to start drawing a circle. Notice what it says at the bottom, use control to constrain it to a perfect circle. Now coming up here at the top, we have the select and transform objects tool, keyboard shortcut F1, which is the standard path selection tool. But notice that there's a twist to this one. If you click on the object once, it gives you the controls to scale and translate the object. But if you click on it again, it toggles to the rotate and shear commands. This is pretty handy. Next up is the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut F2, which is what you use to edit the anchor points and vector paths. Note they call them nodes in this program. And actually, this is an important point. When you create an object like a circle, the nodes do not have Bezier handles. This makes it easier to manipulate the object as a whole. Notice how if you move one of the square shaped nodes, they tend to move in symmetry. But if you select the circular node, at the bottom it tells you this is the end point. And if we click and drag on this point, one of two things will happen. If we are dragging outside the perimeter of the shape, we get this Pac-Man shape, or a segment as it's called. But if we are dragging within the edge of the shape, our circle converts to an arc, which is obvious when you remove the fill. If you notice that this tool is for circles, ellipses, and arcs, and we're wondering how to obtain an arc, well, this is it. So that is how to manipulate the overall appearance of a shape. But what if we want to distort the shape by changing a particular node? For that, you should come up here under Path, select Object to Path, and this will change the outline to a Bezier path, which the F2 tool can directly manipulate. Click on a node to select it, paying attention to the shape of the node. The bottom tells us that the square node is called a symmetric node, meaning if you drag one of the handles, the other one will change in sync with it. Control click to change the type of node. The auto smooth mode is represented by the circular node shape, and this allows us to change the length of the control handles independently of each other, but their angles remain fixed. Control clicking again gives us the third type of node, the cusp node, represented by the diamond shape, which allows fully independent movement of the control handles. Now that we've covered the most important tools, we can get started drawing something. So start by setting the canvas size under File, Document Properties, 
on the Page tab, make sure Pixels are the default units, and change the document size to 720 by 540 pixels. Open the palettes that we need. Hit 5 to fill the window with a page, and let's start drawing. The first thing we need to draw is the bird's head. So F5 for the circle tool, shift click on the red X to turn off the stroke, choose any temporary color for the fill, then starting from the center, hold down shift to draw from the center out and control to constrain it to a perfect circle and drag out a circle. Don't worry about the size, since this is a vector graphic, we can resize it at any time. F1 for the selection tool, select the circle, then on the Fill tab, choose the Radial Gradient and hit the Edit button. The Gradient Editor opens, which is not the most intuitive interface, but you have to hit this button to edit the color stops in the gradient. The one listed on top is the center color of the Radial Gradient, the lower one is the outer color. In this case, it is a transparent orange. That's what this is supposed to mean. Anyway, for our bird's head, the diffuse orange should be something like red 255, green 95, and blue 10 with an alpha at 255, and the highlight orange color should be red 255, green 175, and blue 10. Only the green value differs. And now you should have something that looks like this. We want to move that hotspot up a little, so either double click the circle or hit Control F1 to bring up the gradient tool. This is a pretty easy tool to understand with control points for the central hotspot, as well as for the width and height of the hotspot. If you roll over one of the control points, the info window at the bottom tells you how the modifier keys affect the controls. For instance, shift control causes the width and height controls to move in sync. But all we want to do is move the center up a bit to make it appear as if the light is shining on the bird from above. Keeping organized, let's rename the new layer to head. Next, we need to draw the hair, or whatever you call those things sticking out of the bird's head. So click on the plus sign to add a new layer, name it. Now we want the stuff on this layer to appear behind the head, so use these green arrows to move the new layer down below the head layer. Lock the head layer and make sure the hair layer is unlocked and that it is the selected layer. Press Shift F6 to select the pen tool, or the Bezier tool as they call it in this program. Then click out three points to form a narrow triangle. Double click to close the curve. Then hit F1 to get the selection tool, select the triangle, go to the fill panel, and select Linear Gradient, and on the Stroke Paint tab, just hit the X to get rid of the stroke. Going back to the Fill tab, select the orange gradient that we used earlier, double-click on the triangle to get the gradient tool, then swing the handles to move the hotspot to the top. Switching to the F2 selection tool, zoom in on the triangle by pressing, what is it, 3? Ooh, that's a little bit too big. So hit the minus key to zoom out a little. Now we need to distort the shape of the triangle. Remember that in most cases, before you can see the Bezier handles, you would have to hit shift Control c to convert the object to a path, but this triangle is actually already a Bezier path, though you wouldn't know that since I used a simple click to create the points rather than clicking and dragging, so no Bezier handles are visible. Anyway, shift click on the nodes to bring out new Bezier handles and use them to distort the shape of the triangle. Switching back to the F1 selection tool and zooming out a bit, now we want three copies of this shape, so use Control D to duplicate the shape, then use the F1 selection tool to reposition and rotate the copies into position. Recall that clicking on the shape when the F1 tool is active will toggle between the scale slash translate mode and the rotate slash shear mode of the tool. Once we have them arranged, we want to group them together, which can be done two ways in a vector program. One way is to shift select all of the objects to be grouped and use control G to group the objects. This is good if you think you may need to edit the individual elements later on. The other approach is unique to vector drawing and this is to use the path combining functions like union to create a single compound path out of the three triangles. A little more moving, rotating and scaling with the F1 selection tool and we have the hair in place. To finish up the head, we just need to create additional copies of the hair and position them at the sides of the face. I guess these are the bird's sideburns. Use the F1 tool for all of this. Once everything is in place, we can lock the layer and move on. The eyes are next, so new layer, name it eyes. F5 for the circle tool. Set the fill to white. 
hold control and shift and drag out a circle. Leave it big for now. We'll resize it later. The fill for this is a radial gradient from gray to white. I find that the correct shade of gray is hard to find for this one. It seems like a lightness value of around 235 is acceptable though. For the colored part of the eye, we will use a blue circle with a gradient from pure blue at red zero, green zero, and blue 255 to a highlight that is the same except the lightness is raised to about 175. Use the gradient tool to reposition and kind of squish the highlight into the upper right part of the circle. Resize it a bit, holding the control key to maintain a perfect circle. There, that looks better. Now make a pure black circle for the pupil, zoom in, and make a pure white ellipse for the highlight on the pupil. Use the F1 tool to rotate that a bit. Select those three parts and group them using Control G. This makes it easier to position them relative to the white part of the eye. Continue using the F1 tool to get the sizes of these parts of the eye adjusted correctly, remembering to hold down Control to keep the circles perfect when resizing. Once happy with the one eye, select all and hit Control D to duplicate it, then reposition it to the other side. Once the eyes are done, lock the layer and create a new one for the beak. This ends part one of this tutorial.